Every year since 1989, the Library of Congress has selected 25 films to add to the National Film Registry. The criteria? The films must be culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Each week on You're Missing Out, we take a look at one of these films to try and get to the heart of why they were selected and why they still matter. This episode, part two of our 96 Academy Award special, ranking every nominee. Now what's going to happen is we are going to start ranking them. That's right. We are ranking. We're going to start ranking Best Picture, and then we're going to move through the other categories and offer our rankings where we have them. We're also, this is the part where we get to be a little salty, and we're going to do swaps. We're going to talk about what nominees we would take out and what we would put in their place. Now, one rule we will note, we only swap out movies that we've seen. So, you know, obviously in this case, a lot of us up, but if for whatever reason, you know, uh, Amanda, you decided you really, really wanted to take it to poor things for some reason. Sorry, off the board. If you're going to swap something, it has to be for something you have seen. We are going to kick off our rankings and swaps for Best Picture with Tom. Tom, take us from 10 to 1, your Best Picture rankings. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, 10 to 1. Starting at 10, we got Maestro. Number 9, we got Barbie. Number 8, we have Anatomy of a Fall. Number 7, we have American Fiction. Number 6, we've got Poor Things. Number 5, we've got The Holdovers. Number 4, we've got Zone of Interest. Number three, we got Killers of the Flower Moon. Number two, we have Past Lives. And number one, we have Oppenheimer. I See, I told you there was one that really, really rocked my fucking list, bro. And Past Lives fucking rocked my shit. Um, so with my swaps, uh, I am going to be taking out Maestro, Barbie, Anatomy of a Fall, and American Fiction. And I'm slotting in Godzilla Minus One, The Iron Claw, Asteroid City, and Ferrari. Number 10, Maestro. Number 9, Anatomy of a Fall, which, again, I want to stress. In wow. another year, Right, this is what I'm saying. Okay. You go back like two years, Anatomy of a Fall would have been my number one or something, you know. But uh, number 10, Maestro. Number 9, Anatomy of a Fall. Number 8, The Holdovers. Again, love the movie. Number 7, Barbie. Number 6, Poor Things. Number 5, American Fiction. 4, Past Lives, three, The Zone of Interest, two, Oppenheimer, and number one, Killers of the Flower Moon. Now, in my case, I am swapping out Maestro for The Iron Claw, a just criminally, criminally uh, unnominated film this year. I think we were all pissed about that. Um, They they bungled the rollout for that one. I think everybody feels that way. Uh, I would swap out Anatomy of a Fall for Ferrari. As Tom knows, I'm not a huge Michael Mann guy, and this is my favorite Michael Mann film by far. When I saw it, I immediately texted him. I'm like, this is incredible. Um, I swap out The Holdovers for another movie I'm banging the drum for this year that I'm so mad for. Origin. Absolutely screwed. Absolutely ignored. Absolutely snubbed. So Holdovers, which I loved, goes out for Origin. And last but not least, swapping out Barbie for Vim Vendors' Perfect Days, which is an Mm. exceptional film, which we'll talk more about later. Amanda. Okay. So I forego eight through 10 because I was lazy and bad at time management this year. Um, But so starting at number seven is Maestro. Um, Number six, I almost said eight. I almost forgot how to count backwards. (laughs) Um, Number six is Barbie. Uh, Number five, we'll have Mike shaking his fist at me. It's Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, then it's The Holdovers at number four, American Fiction at number three, Past Lives at number two, which was very hard because it was probably the most personally impactful, but for best picture, number one, I would pick Oppenheimer. Um, Hell yeah. in (laughs) um, In terms of swaps, I was not just lazy about this. I was lazy about seeing a lot of movies that came out in the past year, but- I'm swapping out Maestro for Iron Claw. And were it in the list, it would skyrocket it up into my rankings because I absolutely love that movie. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> yep. The only the only swap that I did as well was Maestro for Iron Claw. I have no idea where I would put it in the rankings if that were a case. I think that would make this decision even harder. This that would list probably be like through, number two for me. 
It could be. This list went through multiple iterations, so I want to say that this is meticulously Oh, why? This went through why, three Kyle, or did, four different did, drafts. Was somebody sitting next to you while you were making your initial ranking, I don't know, at a at a screening for a television program that we went to and threatened that was, Tom and I would beat you up if you kept your ranking how it was? And once and once I and once I realized I was going to get beat up either way, I said, so number 10 is Killers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> number 10 is Maestro. Number nine is Barbie. Number eight, American Fiction. Number seven, The Holdovers. Number six, Killers of the Flower Moon. Number five, The Zone of Interest. Number four, Anatomy of a Fall. Number three, Past Lives. Number two, Poor Things. And of course, number one, The Golden Boy Oppenheimer. Just was there any really doubt there? Okay, so next up, we are now we're going to go through the category. So, Kyle, why don't you just uh, take your MC spot here and tell us what's Rick the next category scratch? we're talking about? And I guess best and I director. So, best director, my ranking, and this is tough because they're mm. all they're all deserving nominees in, in one way or another. But number five, Justine Trier for Anatomy of a Fall. Number four, Yorgos Lanthimos, Poor Things. Number three, Jonathan Glazer, The Zone of Interest. Number two, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer. And my number one, Martin Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon. I'm swapping out two. I would swap out Justine Trier for Celine Song for Past Lives. And I would swap out Yorgos Lanthimos for Michael Mann for Ferrari. Tom. All right. So number five for me is Justine Trier for Anatomy of a Fall. Number four... (laughs) is Martin Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon. Number three is Jonathan Glazer for Zone of Interest. Number two is Yorgos for Poor Things. And number one is C. Knowles for Oppenheimer. I am swapping out... He would love that name, right? He'd be totally cool with that. (laughs) Um, Excuse me. I am swapping out Justine for Sean Durkin for The Iron Claw. And I am taking out Martin and putting in Takashi Yamazaki for Godzilla Minus One. I'm not kidding. That movie's a masterpiece, folks. And honestly, it would be funny in a weird way if Oppenheimer and that were nominated at the same time because Godzilla's kind of a sequel to Oppenheimer. And he's a big boy. He's my big boy. Leave my big boy alone. Amanda, Kyle, either of you want to throw out some director rankings? No pressure if you didn't do them. No worries. Um, yeah, I've got some. Uh, and... Mike's going to hate that he offered this to me. Number five, Killers of the Flower Moon. Number four, The Zone of Interest. Number three, Anatomy of a Fall. Number two, Poor Things. And at number one, uh, what'd you say? Sea Knolls for Sea Knolls. Sea Knolls. So, any rankings for you, Amanda? Um, no, I will be abstaining from ranking because I did such a bad job doing my homework for this one. Um, but I will ask who remembers... Who won this category? Oh, we forgot last to do year. that. Amanda, look at Rep- that! Everybody, everybody, let us give credit. Amanda, wow. first year doing this remembers what we forgot to do. Mm-hmm. This is, I mean, what would you guys do without me? Exactly. This is, you know. <laughs> so last year, oh, um, last year was the Daniels because everything, yes. everywhere, all at once won Best Picture last year. Mm, and the yeah, Daniels right. won Best Director. They sure did. Um, yes, they did. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Glad we did that. Let's remember to do that at the start this time. Thank no you, problem. Amanda, for calling I'm, us out. I'm going to go ahead and I'll take over as MC because it feels like Kyle has some actual some rankings here. He's done more of the prep work than I have. By all means, please. That gives yeah. me a Kyle, little bit to... Kyle, I'm gonna, will listen. Ha- Kyle will happily take any time he has to do less work. Thank God. Let's go. Please. Anytime I get to be more like Tom, and that would be great. Oh, please. You, guys, you all do so like much. Me. I'm the new girl. I'll pay my lumps. Um, the shit. next category on, I'm that sorry. we're going to be... You'll pay your lumps. You'll pay I'm not, your... I love that I'm you I'm sure that it's not... Yeah, well, you know, dude, it's Friday at... <laughs> It's nearly 10 p.m. Yeah, it's nearly 10 p.m. I'm having ice cream for dinner at 9.45. Let's just (laughs) go with this. The next one. Get off our fucking lumps, man. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, Off the rails. Um, But the next category we're going to talk about is best actress. So I'm going to let you take this one, Tom. Who won last year? 
Uh, well, obviously, it was Michelle Yeoh, and even an imbecile like me can remember that. <laughs> uh, so, what's your... Uh, we'll start with you, Tom. Uh, actress rankings. <clears throat> okay, actress. Carrie Mulligan in Maestro, Annette Benning in Nyad, Sandra Hewler in Anatomy of a Fall, Emma Stone in Poor Things, and obviously, Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon. Um... Honestly, at this point, I think I'm really just, I'm swapping out Carrie Mulligan and I'm putting in Greta Lee from Past Lives. That's really kind of, you know, We have Tom, Tom, we have nearly similar rankings. Uh, my number five is Carrie Mulligan. My number four is Annette Benning in Nyad. My number three is Emma Stone in Poor Things. My number two is Sandra Huller in Anatomy of a Fall. And my number one is Lily Gladstone. I am swapping out two. I take out Carrie Mulligan in favor of Greta Lee in Past Lives. Annette Benning is out in favor of Anjanu Ellis Taylor in Origin. She's really good in it. I know nobody saw it but me, but she's very good in it and absolutely would have been nominated if the distributor had decided to let people watch the movie. Similar brains here. I got Annette Benning uh, for Nyad at number five. I got Carrie Mulligan at number four for Maestro. Emma Stone for Poor Thing. Poor Things at number three, Sandra Hewler for Anatomy of a Fall at number two, and then, of course, Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon at number one. I didn't do a whole lot of swaps, if any, for the rest of these categories, so it's going to be rankings from here on out. Okay. I'm, you know, of what I've seen, I would also probably, I'm, I'm putting Lily Gladstone right at the top, um, but can't weigh in very much on all of the rest. So we'll move on to the next category, which is Best Actor. Oh, best actor. So, Tom, do you remember who won last year? I'm going to give you a chance before I say it. That wasn't the Will Smith year. That was two years ago. What that was, was last year? That was two years ago. Um, nope, it was the year after. I can't remember. Well, yeah, uh, it Tom, makes sense. You, you know, it's it's really sad because my my favorite part about the book was the part about the whales. <laughs> Because I kept thinking. Oh he was fuck! <laughs> <laughs> it's the eye roll of the bag of Oh the my god, god! That fucking movie. Oh, but remember yeah. how great it was when he just shows up two and a half hours into the Killers of the Flower yeah. Moon. No, it's like three hours in, and just that happens, and you're just like, hell yeah, let's fucking go. Oh yes, best actor went to Brendan Fraser for the whale. Um, I'm going first, right? I think on this one, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my number five, I I be I know we don't have the same total five, but I think we probably have the same number five. My number five is Coleman Domingo for Rustin. My number four, Bradley Cooper for Maestro. Here's where I'm going to get in trouble. Number three, Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer. Number two, Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers. And fuck it, my number one, I think it's a tremendous performance and it's very subtle and it's really well done. My number one is Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. I have oh, yeah, all right. I, I love it. Um, I am swapping out two. I am swap. I'm doing one swap that I think we all have. Let's be honest. I'm swapping out Coleman Domingo for Zac Efron for the Iron Claw. It would have been an extraordinary oh, yeah. nomination, and he absolutely deserved it. And I'm also taking out Bradley Cooper. I know, I know, he worked very hard. I know he doesn't know if he likes mm-hmm. his daughter. I understand, <laughs> but I'm swapping. <laughs> I'm swapping out Bradley Cooper. Oh, Amanda, did you not see that? We'll talk about that interview later. He said a thing okay. on the press junket, and it's wild. Um, I'm He's saying a lot of weird things. I'm He's saying a lot of weird shit, yeah. Yeah. I'm swapping out Bradley Cooper for Koji Yakusho, the lead actor in Vim Vendors' is Perfect Days. An extraordinary performance. I can't recommend it enough. That's I need to see it still. All right. Um, yeah, my number five is Coleman Domingo and Rustin. Uh, my number four is Bradley Cooper and Maestro. Three is Jeffrey Wright in American Fiction, despite the fact he's basically playing me in a movie. <laughs> um Paul Giamatti in The Holdovers at number two, and Killian Murphy in Oppenheimer at number one. I am taking out Coleman Domingo and his fucking voice in Rustin. Ooh. Right off the bat, I was not happy with what he was doing. Um, I don't know if it's better or worse than what he's doing in The Color Purple, where he's just acting with his lips stretched across his teeth the whole time. Or, oh, Nettie, I'm gonna make you miserable. And just like, just talk. Just talk, bro. Bro, you can talk. It's fine. Uh, so he's gone for Zac Efron in The Iron Claw. An unbelievable performance. Fucking ridiculous. Uh, and I'm taking out Bradley Cooper for uh, Adam Driver in Ferrari. 
Tom and he's I an Italian very... boy. He's so Tom Italian, and... he cannot stop by having a sex with the women. <laughs> Even though one of the women a shoots a gun at him, but I still love the other woman. But I love her too. She's a fiery Italian broad. I like her no guns. But I need to punish the women. <laughs> Amanda, you think he's kidding. I love Ferrari. This is not an unfair synopsis of the film. This is, this is, I believe, the logline on IMDb. My cars, they're so beautiful, but they kill so many people. But I need to keep her making them go vroom vroom. Tom, Children Tom, die. Tom. Tom and Tom and Mai's list is very similar. I've got Coleman Domingo at number five for Rustin. I've got Bradley Cooper at Maestro for number four. Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers at number three. Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction at number two. And then, of course, my boy, my Irish boy, Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer. There's nothing more to say. I mean, I would agree, though. I, I didn't do any swaps, but Zac Efron should have been recognized in any time to nominate Iron I Claw. used to be a brother. I, I, we, well, I'll be your brother now. Will you be my daddy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 place. Um, obviously, I haven't seen all of them. I'm sure that had I, I would have made a similar swap to everyone else because I really loved Zac Efron in Iron Claw. Um, but we're moving on to the next category, which is for Best Supporting Actress. And Mike, you've been making Tom <laughs> remember who won last year. So do you oh, Jamie, who won of course, Lee, of course I do. Curtis. Yeah, to be clear, Matt, it's the <laughs> only reason that I'm asking Tom to remember is over the last three Oscar specials, Tom has maybe remembered one category. And most times when asked, Tom, what won last year? He goes, I don't remember what I did yesterday. So this That's is just... Fair. The fact that last year was memorable enough that Tom remembers is, is I take that as a win in my book. Yes, it was Jamie Lee Curtis last year for Supporting Actress. <laughs> um, supporting Actress. Oh, wait, uh, it's Europe first, Tom. Uh, yeah, I go first in this one. Um, all right, my number five is America Ferrara and Barbie. My number four is Danielle Brooks in The Color Purple. My number three is Emily Blunt and Oppenheimer. Number two is Jodie Foster in Nyad. And number one is Divine Joy Randall for The Holdovers. Um, I am taking out America Ferrara and Barbie and I'm putting in, this is a dark horse category because I love this movie when I saw it at Fantastic Fest and Hathaway and Eileen. Um, and I am taking out Danielle Brooks and if she was nominated, this motherfucker would have won Penelope Cruz and Ferrari. It looks like her soul is on fire and the flames are bursting out of her eye sockets. She is unbelievable in that fucking movie. An actual crime that she didn't get nominated for some of this fucking dog shit i'm sorry not dog shit but like come on like really really we needed to we needed to acknowledge that the color purple existed i think this is wonderful because this year in the best picture lineup uh tom and i didn't really have any movies we vehemently disagreed on uh so you guys are going to get a little preview of a movie that wasn't in best picture that tom and i clearly disagree on spoilers my number five is america ferrera for barbie my number four emily blunt for oppenheimer Number three, Jodie Foster and Nyad. My number two is Danielle Brooks for The Color Purple. And my number one, obviously, Divine Joy Randolph uh, for The Holdovers. I am swapping out America Ferreira for Penelope Cruz in Ferrari. Swapping out Emily Blunt for Sandra Huller in The Zone of Interest. I mm. think this is one of the rare years where somebody should get double nominated because, my God, when you see what she does in those two films and how radically different they are. Um, and... I'm swapping out Jodie Foster for Taraji P. Henson in The Color Purple. That's right. Let's just repeat the 80s. Both those characters, put them in the same category. Cancel each other out, sure, but put them both in. That's my take on supporting actress. Kyle. Boo. <laughs> kind of a mixture of both of y'alls. Uh, I got number five, Jodie Foster for Nyad. Number four, American Ferrera for Barbie. Number three, Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer. Number two, Danielle Brooks for The Color Purple. And of course, number one, Divine Joy Randall for The Holdovers. For bringing some joy into our lives. Hell yeah. <laughs> Unless you have supporting actress category? thoughts, Amanda, please. Tell me. Uh... Um, again, limited exposure to the to all of the nominees. Um like I said during my review of um, or my feedback on Oppenheimer, I really loved Emily Blunt's performance. But really what you guys have me doing is wanting to go and watch the other movies that I haven't seen to, to see how that all stacks up. 
that being said, we are moving on to our next category, which is Best Supporting Actor. Key. Hey, Quan, baby! Burr, burr, burr. This is, I love him so much. This is such a shift from every other year. This burr, is so nice. Burr, 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 burr. Burr. All right, you're first. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm shot. This is a really good year for supporting actor because, like, I feel weird it is. about having this guy as number five. Uh, my number five is Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things. My number four, Ryan Gosling for Barbie. Number three, Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction. Again, I know it's a quieter performance than the other two. I know there are people that have Gosling a lot higher. Yes, he is very funny. Yes, he says sublime in a silly voice. Like, I do, I, and I'm not trying to minimize that. Like, yeah, there's good stuff, but Sterling K. Brown is doing a lot with a little. He's really He's a lightning rod in that movie. Yeah, especially. He's a fucking movie. firecracker. <sighs> My number one and two have been dancing back and forth. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I really came very close to De Niro as my number one, but I'm just going to bite the bullet and be populist on this one. Robert De Niro's number two for Killers of Flower Moon. And number one is Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. I don't know how it happened that Oppenheimer is my number two movie of the year. And being on this podcast today has made me feel like the number one Oppenheimer hater. I don't know how it happened, (laughs) but I'm just like, I feel like I'm being, I feel like I'm being pummeled. Um, uh, I am swapping out two. Um, I'm swapping out uh, Ruffalo for Holt McElhaney in The Iron Claw. It's an extraordinary performance that deserved more love this year. And I'm swapping out Gosling for the one real true snub in terms of like everybody was shocked. Charles Melton for May, December. Like mm-hmm. one of those, like the, the performance that everybody before the Oscar nominations, like this is the one that's going to give Downey a run for his money. And then when they completely passed over Charles Melton. Everybody went, Downey, start clearing off room on your shelf, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm taking out Ruffalo for Melton, uh, or Ruffalo and Gosling for Melton and McElhaney, two very different but extraordinary explorations of fatherhood. All right, my number five is Gosling and Barbie. My number four is Ruffalo and Poor Things. My number three is Sterling K. Brown in American Fiction. My number two is Robert De Niro in Killers of the Flower Moon. And my number one is Robert Downey Jr. in Oppenheimer. I am taking out Gosling for Holt McElhaney for Iron Claw. <laughs> and I am taking out Ruffalo for Dominic Sessa in The Holdovers. Mm. Uh, Boy. My list, number five, Robert De Niro in Killers of the Flower Moon. Number four, Mark Ruffalo in Poor Things. Number three, Ryan Gosling in Barbie. Number two, Sterling K. Brown in American Fiction. And my number one, Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. Throw that liquid death. Go ahead. It's just water. <laughs> anyway. So again, limited exposure to all of the nominees, but I would have to say that I would put up uh, Dominic from The Holdovers as well for this one. I really, really enjoyed his performance. Um, And because you all already said Holt for Best Supporting Actor, I do want to point out that I really appreciated Jeremy Allen White's performance in The Iron Mm -hmm. Claw as well. And 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 was surprised that well, it didn't listen, get every, a bit everybody's good in the Iron Claw. The Iron Claw is yeah, fucking masterpiece. Yeah. The 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 only thing that's not good in the Iron Claw is they got the absolute dirt worst guy to play Ric Flair. <laughs> that was an absolutely terrible fucking performance. It was, what were they thinking? That, that was the one thing that did pull me out of the movie. Was that, that was the one thing where you go, have they seen Ric Flair speak? Have yeah. they watched any of his old like yeah. South fucking territory promotions or whatever? Like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, I don't know. what's the next thing? It's late. <laughs> I've had enough. The of next this. category is best original screenplay. Okay, again, we know what won last year, right? Tom, oh, Tom is yeah. eating something. So yes, everything, yeah. everywhere, all yeah. at once. Everything, everything ever all at once. Yeah. Last year, um, honestly, part of the reason the game is easier this year is that. Nine times out of ten, if you say everything everywhere all at once or all quiet on the Western Front, you're probably going to be right. Uh, there's some <laughs> exceptions. But really, like that was a weird year where they, they just steamrolled the Oscars. <laughs> I got so sick of hearing that goddamn score that night. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, we were all riding high for everything everywhere, and there was this fear in our hearts when All Quiet kept winning awards, and you kept hearing that goddamn Darth Vader music <laughs> where you're like, is this how the night ends? Are we just going to have to, like, hear, I don't know, somehow Daniel Brühl won Best Actor. 
Oh, <laughs> uh original screenplay um you, i think you're up first tom yeah sure why not uh Do number it. five is maestro number four is may december number three is anatomy of a fall number two is the holdovers number one is past lives i am swapping out maestro and may december and i'm putting in asteroid city and master gardener okay um, I'm so now I'm mad at you. No, because every other goddamn year that we do this special, Tom makes me look like a dick. Because Tom always remembers to note the screenwriters, and I never do, and I always feel shitty. So I well, Wes noted, Anderson and Paul Schrader. No, I'm just saying I noted them this year, and then you didn't do it. I'm like, God damn it, I did extra work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, my number five is Maestro by Bradley Cooper and Josh Singer. My number four. May December by Sammy Birch. My number three, The Holdovers by David Hemmingson. Number two, Anatomy of a Fall, Justine Trier and Arthur Harari. And my number one also, Past Lives by Celine Song, um, which I would love. I would fucking love to see pull off a win on Oscar night. I am swapping out Maestro for The Iron Claw by uh, Sean Durkin, which I miswrote. And I wrote Sean Baker, who did not write The Iron Claw. I would, watch Sean, I would watch Sean Baker's The Iron Claw, but that's a very different movie. Um, well, yeah, more about the prostitutes the wrestlers hang out with <laughs> <exactly>. on the road. <laughs> um, and I am swapping out May December for Perfect Days by Takuma Taka- by Takuma Takasaki and Vim Vendors. Two alliterative names for those screenwriters. <laughs> my my list number five May December my list. My list, my wife, number four, <laughs> maestro. Um, number three, The Holdovers. Number two, Anatomy of a Fall. And surprise to nobody, number one is uh, Past Lives, because that movie fucking rules. Past Lives is really good. Tom is tired. Our next category. <laughs> <laughs> adapted screenplay. Oh, here's one. Tom, do you remember who won Adapted All Quiet on the Western Front? No. 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 What, what did? It's our good friend, Tom. Who? I'm not. I don't have any remember, friends. Right? Oh! Tom. Yes, of course it's your good a, friend. Who is an Oscar winner in whose presence you once said the phrase, why the fuck am I here? Hold on. Hold on. Fucking Jesus Christ. My. Is he... No, I. I can't tell no, I for- I forgot that my phone is connected to the headphones also, so sometimes it like <laughs> overtakes the fucking headphones and I'm just like, God damn it. Okay. Tom. Okay. Who who is an Oscar winning filmmaker in whose presence, digital presence, you once said, Why the fuck are we here? Oh, Sarah Polly. That's women talking, right. Right. Yes, women talk. Yes, they in they certainly did talk. An excellent yeah. win. Like, we were all stoked about that. Um, yeah, people were weird film. about that movie. Yeah, great, great film. Great movie, um, good film. Good film. So, good film. my number five is Poor Things by Tony McNamara, based on the book by Alistair Gray. I'm just going to do it now because I wasted the time <laughs> putting all the names. Uh-huh. My number four, and I'm shocked that I put this at number four, um, is The Zone of Interest by Jonathan Glazer, loosely based on the book by Martin Amin. Um Number three, Oppenheimer. Christopher Nolan, based on American Prometheus by Kai Bird and Martin J. Sherman. Number two, Barbie. Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach, based on the toy by Mattel. Uh, Just got to give credit for pulling that off. But my number one, American Fiction by Cord Jefferson, based on Eraser by Percival Everett. In my uh, case, I'm swapping one out. I am swapping out poor things for, and by this point in me mentioning it, this will be no surprise, for Origin by Ava DuVarnay, based on the book Cased the Origin or Cast the Origin of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. Again, if people had seen it, they they they'd agree. But whatever. Well, you know, seeing movies, it's overrated. <laughs> um, movies are bad. Big mistake. Don't do them. Um, all right. Um, <clears throat> my number five is Barbie. My number four is American Fiction. My number three is Zone of Interest. My number two is Poor Things. My number one is Oppenheimer. I am swapping out Barbie for Godzilla minus one, and I am swapping out American Fiction for The Killer. I thought that was a very smart script. I like that. Andrew Kevin Walker's a good fella. 
Tom and I are nearly identical. Number five, Barbie. Number four, American Fiction. Number three, Poor Things. Number two, The Zone of Interest. And number one, Oppenheimer. Yeah, baby. Once again, I am deferring having an opinion. I am on my second 24-ounce energy drink. And that brings us to our next category, which is Best Documentary Feature. So I do know what one let... I do know what won last year because it's really depressing to think about right now. Last year's Best Documentary Oscar went to, I am so sorry, Navalny. Last mm. year's oh! Best Documentary winner was about the defiant efforts of Russia's resistance leader, who, if you believe state media in Russia, died of natural causes. He and died of sudden death syndrome. I have, guys, I have great news. Uh, if you want another movie about Russian war crimes to win this year, it probably will. So here's my best documentary rankings. Number five, The Eternal Memory, which, again, even though it's at number five, guys, you can find that on Paramount Plus, a really moving film about uh, a journalist who made his life trying to make sure people don't forget about the crimes of Pinochet, uh, who then contracts Alzheimer's disease and is losing his own memory. Um, none of these are easy watches is what I'm getting at. Uh, number four, Bobby Wine, The People's President. Number three, To Kill a Tiger. Number two, Four Daughters, which I really loved. In another year, I'm beating the drum for Four Daughters, but you can't argue with the sheer power of 20 Days in Mariupol, which is a movie that I will say is, is it must be witnessed, but also in the zone of interest category of um, I would not fault anybody for not watching because um, Jesus, it's just... It's just the raw footage of an Associated Press reporter who was in Mariupol, Ukraine, when the bombings started on the hospitals. You see shit in that that no human being should ever see. It's um, just a hell of a work. Um, yeah, but NATO. Maddening. Yeah, yeah. Really maddening shit. Really just vile war crimes. Uh, so that's documentary feature. Oh, last year. Yeah, last year's winner was Navalny. That's documentary feature. I assume, Tom, Kyle, you guys have no nope. uh, input on that. So what are we doing next? We are doing Best Documentary Short. Now I'm trying to remember what won last year. Haha, <laughs> welcome to my world, bitch. Yeah, Doc Short. That's weird. What won last year for Doc Short? Oh, I've got it. Hold, please. No, I'm, um, I'm just trying to think. What What the hell? Um, I'm trying to remember if I saw it. I'm trying to remember if I liked it. Um, hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if you Yeah, I I wouldn't I'm not surprised you don't remember this probably. Okay. What was it? I don't I It's don't. short so it's um it's the Elephant Whispers. Oh yeah, that was cute. I like that one. I like that one. It wasn't my favorite last year, but I like Elephant Whispers. Anyway, this year, uh number five, the ABCs of book banning. I agree with everybody, like it's a novel idea, but it doesn't totally work. Um they don't do enough of it. Uh, number four, The Island in Between. Number three, The Barber of Little Rock. Number two, Nai Nai and Wapo. And the number one, The Last Repair Shop. I think that's going to win because it's just the most well put together Doc Short. Um, again, I'm going to assume, Tom, Kyle, you guys are not watching Doc Shorts. No, yeah, I tried to get around on this year, but it was the last on my list, so sorry. That's smart, smart bet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but next up, I believe, I mean, Amanda, you can tell us where we're going, but Tom, next up, you actually have a horse in this race. What? Yeah. Live action short. Best live action short. Now, last year's winner, I do remember this because it was middle of the pack for me and I was a little irked, is An Irish Goodbye. That's I right. Love doing those. Find another person who remembers that title off the top of their head. You find them. I dare you. Um, but An Irish Goodbye. Live action short. So I'm just going to give my ranking. But my number five is a movie where... my So I... Tom has seen my number five and my number one. He has seen what I think is the best and worst of this category. So I'm going to go ahead and say what my ranking is, and then I'm just going to give Tom, I know we're running, but I'm going to give Tom a little bit of runway to talk about the live action shorts that he's seen this year. And Tom, I think that's fair to give you a little runway for that, right? Oh, yeah? I think that's more than fair. <laughs> You're a king. <laughs> number five for live action shorts is The After. Uh, number four, Invincible. Number three, Knight of Fortune. Number two, Red, White, and Blue, which 
could pull off a surprise win on Oscar night. I'll be 100% honest with you guys. I could see it pulling off a surprise win, even though I think that movie's success has more to do with how it avoids going wrong more than how it goes right. But anyway, my number one is The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar, the Wes Anderson Netflix short. I would swap out the after for a uh, satirical short called The Anne Frank Gift Shop. Um, it's, it, I know how it sounds. It's, it knows what it's doing. Um, and I would swap out number four. I would swap out Invincible for the uh, live action short Yellow, which is a really well done, simple short film that probably could have happened at any time. It's really well done. So though that's my ranking. Now, again, I mentioned the number five. It is quite a choice. Um, so I texted Tom and I said, Tom, I know you say you don't have strong dislike or confusion or bafflement at any of the nominees this year. So please watch this short. Tom, why don't you take us through what happened when you made that choice okay so uh watching the after was like that time uh two years ago when i had a seizure and had to go to the hospital and my mind i felt my brain light up on fire and i thought i was dying um because at no point does anything in this stupid fucking thing like make sense it's crazy don't get me wrong. You you know, seems like a normal little bullshit fucking short that gets nominated. Oh, look at David Oyelowo and his is it it's going to be like about a guy who works a lot and he's going to have to learn how to be, you know, a family man again. And you're like, "Oh, that's isn't that nice? Isn't that nice?" And then and then his daughter gets fucking knifed and thrown off a bridge. <laughs> and it's not like Oh, it's hinted at. You see a guy take a fucking hunting knife, stab a little girl in the chest, and then yeet her over a fucking bridge. <laughs> and then the mom <laughs> just goes over to follow her to her death. And you're just like, what the fuck is this shit? And it's not even like just a guy with a knife. It's like he looks like a fucking slasher villain from like a regional like Wisconsin filmed fucking independent slasher movie where the guys only were able to outfit their villain with shit from like a local army surplus store. (laughs) It's just like, oh, well, what if we make a commentary about all the mass shootings that are happening in America? But since it's set in England, it has to be a mass stabbing. And he's just like, not really a one-to-one comparison, friend. And then it becomes about him working through his grief as an Uber driver. <laughs> like, what? A fucking Uber driver? That's Wait, that's really? Gonna make- yeah. Actually? I'm not kidding. I'm telling you, this shit's fucking bananas, bro. Uh, and then, okay. he pi- then you just see him like for... I feel like roughly five minutes just picking up customer after customer, and you're just like, oh, okay, I get it. He drives a cab. Are you kidding me? No! And then he picks up a family. Um, um, I believe... I think it was... I think it's a mixed-race family, right? Because it's a white dad and a black Mm -hmm. mom, and their little daughter, who, wouldn't you know, looks just like the daughter that got knifed a year ago. I'm gonna keep saying knifed, because I can... I I truly... I cannot get it through people's... I, like... A child gets assassinated (laughs) with a hunting knife. And you see it, and it's insane, and then the movie becomes something you don't think it's going to be. Again, it takes a third shift. Now we're in the fourth shift. Uh, you know, uh, a car metaphor, as you know, now that he's a driver. Um, and the parents are keep, these these parents keep fighting, and this little surrogate fucking metaphor of a child <laughs> is just miserable. And then he drops them off, and he helps them get their, their luggage out of the car, but the little girl stays in the car. And he's like, oh, do you, you, come on, you need help getting out? And he lets her out. And then she... For some fucking reason, I think because she read the script and knew he needed his emotional catharsis, she hugs him and he looks freaked out and he starts being emotional. But I also just love that the parents are like, uh, excuse me, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what a stupid... And then he fucking... Unlocks her arms 
moves her away from the camera <laughs> so he can cry in full close up as the parents are now just like, um, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> the end. I am. <laughs> I am so happy that all of us are on camera for this because all of us unraveled in very different I, ways. I think I think what I I it. think this sequence is just going to be like a three-way split screen, like Abel Gonz's Napoleon. It's just gonna be Kyle and Amanda on either side of Tom explaining this. Just so you can see you process. Yeah. Because I thought the craziest thing that I was going to hear were the words and Frank gift shop in that particular order. And then that happened. Okay, we need to move on before I lose my mind. Go on uh, Netflix. You can watch it. The it's 18 minutes. Show. It's no, 18 you. minutes of pure cinematic fentanyl. Let me. Let me. Let me. <laughs> no, thank you. I would rather watch the exploding barbed wire death match from AW a couple of years ago again um, the next category that we have is best animated short best animated short I know that Kyle has actually seen these so this will not I be have. me uh, this will not be me listing things um, last year's winner again I can tell you this one is I'm not going to get the order of the animals right so I'm just warning everybody now how dare you the Boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse? Yes? Oh, you is were right. One? Okay, good. It is yeah. Order. yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the one yeah. that won. Um, this year, uh, number five, Our Uniform. Number four, War is Over, inspired by the music of John and Yoko. Uh, and yes, I know that's probably going to win. Uh, number three, pa oh, number three, Pachyderm. Number two, Letter to a Pig, which, again, I really love. I could talk about Letter to a Pig for a while, but we're running on and nobody wants to hear about it. Number one, an animated Correct. short that I think Kyle will agree with me. Tom would fuck with so much. So much. Which is oh, the, my God. The, which is the Tim Blake Nelson voiced bleak film, bleak existentialist film, 95 Senses. Hell yeah. Which rules. Um, I just have to... one question. Does yeah. a child get knifed? Tom? No. I, you oh! would, Tom, you would be surprised how close you are. Uh, spoilers. Anyway, oh. I would do one swap. I'm t I like our uniform, but I'm taking out our uniform for Once Upon a Studio, the Disney 100th anniversary short that they made that is very, very good. Um, and I'm, I don't have that to say about many of the 100th anniversary things, but that short is very good and I think absolutely deserves to be in there. But it, it wasn't, uh, even though it seemed like a lock to win. So that is mine. But Kyle, let's hear your ranking, buddy. We're we're in a similar mindset mm -hmm. here. So number five, our uniform. Number four, did you say pachyderm? Pachyderm, yeah. Pachyderm. Number three, letter to a pig. Number two, war is over, inspired by the music of John and Yoko. And number one, 95 senses. So I've got to preface this by saying that up until uh, 95 cents was the last movie that I saw. Yeah. I don't know what order they put it in the animated streaming thing that they had it on and everything, but I just went in that particular order. And when I saw war is over it, immediately for me, I was like, that's my pick. It's about war. It's got John Lennon in it. War, it's, war. Pro it's produced in an unreal engine, which I was talking to Mike about being like, is there, has there ever been a movie that's been nominated? That was built in a video game engine. Like could be pre unprecedented. And then 95 Cents has happened. Uh, literally was the last movie I watched. And as uh, Mike has attested, it fucked so hard. The you, you sit there thinking it is one thing, and very slowly do you realize it's something entirely different. And I think that's what makes it that much more yeah. special. So it's almost the opposite of what makes War is Over so great. It seems obvious. It's what isn't obvious about 95 Cents is that makes it the number one pick. So yeah, I'm fairly certain that you would have picked it too if you saw yeah, it. Yeah, Tom, we got to get you to see that before the ceremony. That one you will genuinely love. You'll have to catch me first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our next category is Best Animated Feature. All right. Uh, it's it's a, quite a category. There are actually some some great ones in here. Uh, my number five is Elemental. Number Wait, four. what one? Oh, last year, what one animated feature? Um, oh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, right? Sure Hell did. Yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. Even though my favorite last year was Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Masterpiece. Um, but both great films. Team Marcel. Both films. Shut up. I'm sorry. Team I had Marcel. that as number two. I had that as number two. I shouldn't be bad. Okay. Number five for me this year is Elemental. Number four, Nimona. 
Here's where I might be controversial. Number three, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Um, my reasoning for putting Spider-Verse that low is if I may re- reiterate my esteemed co-host uh, talking about Dune two years ago. I liked it, but it's half a fucking movie. It just it stops. It just stops with the most graceless yeah. ending. It's just yeah. a, like everything you said about Dune two years ago, I felt with Spider-Verse. I'm like, I'm yeah, like everybody it. felt it. I, when I saw it, when I saw it in the theaters, you could feel the audible groan when it said when it cut to to be continued. Either, Nobody fucking knew. It either has to be half an hour longer to resolve that storyline, or it has to be half an hour shorter and just make yeah. Miles going into the whatever. Anyway, uh, so my number yeah, three whatever, is it's Cross Spider Verse. My number two is Robot Dreams. That's a terrific film. I know it's hard to find right now. I had to go see it at a French animation film festival. But it is getting a release later in March. Guys, check yep. it out. It's really beautifully done. But my number one, which the is man. Tom, it, yeah, which is Tom's number one, which is the number one, is The Boy and the Heron. Um, Hayao Miyazaki's latest film. A remarkable work. Uh, I do have two swaps. Um, <laughs> I, am, I am taking out Nimona in favor of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. I Hell agree yeah. with Tom's sentiment that everything people are praising about across the Spider-Verse, this film does and better. Yep. And I am taking out Elemental for um, uh, Migration. No, I'm taking out <laughs> Elemental for Migration, the, the duck movie. You know why? Because you haven't seen it. You don't know. You don't know if it's good or not. <laughs> you just, none of you saw it. I, I, so I, you can't tell me I'm wrong. That's so a, that's a good in, I love that. I, I, I truly love that. I, that is that is honestly the funniest thing you've ever done in your life. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually the funniest thing the least funny man I've ever met has ever done. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Uh, Kyle, okay. Kyle or Tom, do you have animation thoughts or rankings? Or- uh, I only I- saw two of the nominees, and it's um, Spider-Verse and Boy in the Heron. I don't really need to see anything else to know Boy in the Heron should win. I'm sure if I saw them all, I'd I'd replace <laughs> Elemental with uh, Ninja Turtles because Ninja Turtles fucking rules, yeah. and it was better than Spider Verse. I know that for sure because it was a complete movie and it was under two hours and it looked amazing and it didn't torture its artists to get that way and it was really funny and they have little Ninja Turtle boys make fun of New Yorkers who eat bacon egg and cheeses. That is very relatable. Bacon egg cheese. Bacon egg and cheese. Bacon egg and cheese. Bacon egg and cheese. Bacon, can I, can I admit one thing that's a slight spoiler, though, is that at the end, all the turtles are getting dressed up and Splinter's handing them their lunch and everything. And I just had a great time watching this movie. And my partner, who was sitting uh, next to me watching it, just turns to me and she goes, Are you crying? <laughs> and I'm, just like, I'm just like, They're, cool. They're so good. They're such I good also got to say, the running joke of Splinter thinking people are going to milk the boys <laughs> and they actually get into a milker machine. What is that? Does that say milking machine? <laughs> the funniest fucking thing. I couldn't fucking believe that they paid that off so fucking well. Also, love that they gave Splinter a Jackie Chan fight scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great fucking movie. Okay. It was, it was, I will, I, I didn't see all of them either, but Ninja Turtles is, is up there with me for, for all of the animated yeah. movies that I did see this year. Um, that being said, we are I'm putting going- it, actually I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it out there. The the Turtles movie in 2026 is going to get nominated for best animated feature. I fucking hope so. I'm I'm putting it I'm putting it out there right now. I want to be the first one out there that calls it. It's it's going to happen. Well, because it's going to come out be the before the new Spider Verse. <laughs> I mean, at this rate, I, mean, I, mean, at this, I mean, at this rate, I mean, that's the crazy thing. Turtles has a sequel or a release date before freaking Beyond the Spider Verse does. Remember when they thought movie. that movie was actually going to come out eight months after the Spider Verse? I don't. In what world? I don't know. Wait, in what no. world anybody who actually knows distribution sat there and went, "Oh yeah, this is definitely happening." There's no scenarios. So, yeah, as more fucking animators lo- leap out of fucking windows. <laughs> All right. We gotta finish this in eight months. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amanda, get good? us out of here. Get yeah, us out please. of here. Yeah, please. international feature, <laughs> guys. I just noticed that our list of oh. categories extends onto another page. So let's go. There we go. Look at you keeping us on track. Look at Best you. international feature. Last year's winner was All Quiet on the Rest of Front. Bomp, bomp, bomp. It sure was. Okay. Bah, I don't bah, have bah. any swap. 
international feature because unlike Tom, I stick to the short list, which means I can't put Godzilla minus one in because Japan already got a film in this category. So Bitches. here are my rankings. Number five, The Teacher's Lounge. I like this film, but it kind of falls apart at the end. Number four, Society of the Snow. Very, very long. You know how Tom loves to say it could use some editing? Society of the Snow. Graphic as hell, but could use some editing. Number three, Io Capitano, Matteo Garone. We love him. We love the man. Number two, Perfect Days. Extraordinary film. Deeply moving. Uh, Tom, I cannot wait for you to see this in particular because this is a spiritual sequel to Paris, Texas. And I know how much Ooh, you love Oh, baby. You're going to love this movie. But my number one, obviously, is The Zone of Interest. Uh, without yep. a doubt. Uh, just an absolute just masterwork. There's, there's no question of it there. It's the only one I saw, so it's my number one as well. Where are we going next, man? Hey, we're moving it along to best costume design. Okay. Um, Remember what one last year, Tom? Because I... I don't know. Was there some fucking costume drama? I don't um, think it, was, it couldn't have been all quiet. No. And I don't think it I, went to everything everywhere. You wouldn't you wouldn't expect this. I mean, if, when you hear it, you, you'll be like, oh, sure. But you wouldn't expect it. Am I going to say, it, oh, wouldn't... sure? Or am I going to go, oh... Um, no, comparatively, but oh, it? no, it's, it's, it's Black Panther Wakanda forever. Oh, okay. Yeah, what? but what, Rock. yeah, but it was up against Babylon, Elvis, everything everywhere all at once. Should've, and Miss Harris goes to Paris. Should have gone to Mrs. Harris goes to Paris or oh, everything. Oh, everywhere. Those are great. Okay. Costume design. Go. Tom, do you have rankings or no? Uh, well, I didn't see Napoleon, but I ranked the other four. Um, Kills of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Barbie, Poor Things. I don't have swaps because I just cool. kind of crapped out at the end. All right. Uh, my number five, Oppenheimer. Number four, Napoleon. Number three, Killers of the Flower Moon. Number two, Poor Things. Number one, Barbie. Got to give credit for just replicating those costumes. I'm going to do two swaps here, and they are both real out there ones, one of which Tom is going to get mad for no matter how tired he is. I am swapping out Oppenheimer for Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm sorry. Those suits are good. What the fuck? Are you, are, you are a fucking <laughs> asshole are you good. are a bitch you should not live near we a went, school we, we went we the went three hours without getting in any fights good. mike what the that hell is, man and that then, is a fucking criminal do you have and then, syphilis and then i am so swapping out oppenheimer for five nights at freddy's i'm swapping out napoleon for <laughs> here's fucker. a real pull swapping out napoleon for creation of the gods one kingdom of the storms which is a chinese film that i saw in a very empty 42nd Street AMC that I thought was uh, very cool and had great costumes in it. So that's my costume choices. I am going to fucking <laughs> cut your dick off. <laughs> my, are you I've fucking kidding me? At Freddy's was robbed. Amanda, where are we going next? Oh, I also oh, uh, I also had a similar uh, uh, fucking list as uh, Mike. Uh, five Oppenheimer, four Napoleon, Killers for number three, uh, two Barbie, one Poor Things. So we just swapped our one and two. Okay. Next. Sorry, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the Five Nights at Freddy's thing. All um, good. We we are too. Just let it yeah. let it go. You know, Mike, we you are yeah. you are certainly the guy who signed onto this call informally. Hey, Mike, do you want do you want to um, do you want to make those hand motions and open your mouth in front of a phallic mic again for 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 the audience, please? I think everybody needs okay. that image in their head. Our next category is best makeup and hairstyling. Okay. Number five, Golda. That makeup does not look good in most of that movie. Number four, Oppenheimer. Number three, Society of the Snow. Number two, Poor Things. And number one, Maestro. Yes, I know everybody got mad about the fake nose. I get it, but I, that old age makeup looks good in that movie. Uh, I have no swaps, you... just I couldn't think of anything. Do you yeah. remember who won last year? Oh, shit. Last year... Bum, bum, bum. Did, it? Did it go to all? No, no. Oh, okay. no, I don't know. I just no. actually come oh, the on. Whale. Oh, the, whale. the whale, the whale, yeah. the whale, yeah. Hey, what if a guy was fat? Man? He orders, he orders a pizza and then floats into heaven. Um, yep. Hey, he orders, as, we all, as we all do. <laughs> I've been there. A lot of pizzas and then floats off into heaven. Okay. I, I have. Sorry, been there. I jumped the gun on the on the winners because I can tell Amanda is fading all right. fast. After two yeah, monsters. All right. yeah. I, I haven't. I, I haven't. I, no, I didn't I'm see society. Okay. Okay. I haven't seen okay. Society of the Snow or Golda. I haven't either. I haven't so, either. Um, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things. That's my rankings. Uh, I don't know. Put like Guardians of the Galaxy three in there or something. I don't know. <laughs> that is that is that is also my ranking. Uh, five Society of the Snow, four for Golda. Maestro number three, number two Oppenheimer, and number one Poor Things. Gotta love those wacky ass costumes. Next. Right. 
Well, we are jumping into best production design. Does anybody know who won last year? Uh, everything Everywhere. All Quiet. It's got to be um, one of the two, right? Fucking, what are we, I'm sorry, what category production is this? Production design, Kyle. You also didn't know the last category because you just said Poor Things was your number one because gotta love those costumes in the hair and makeup category. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed Hell that. yeah. Let's get some Hell yeah. cocaine. What, 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 Let's get, what, yeah. Respectfully, what? this is our longest yeah, episode no, to date, absolutely, so absolutely. forgive this me. This is stupid. This is this stupid. Is, no, it's it's solely because we, we just all went on about those picture nominees. Uh, what, what won production design last year? I don't remember. Oh, you're asking me? How dare you? No, Best I production time was all it. quiet on the Western. All, I, all quiet on the Western. Okay. Or, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't see Napoleon. So my four is um, Kills of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Barbie, Poor Things. There we go. Uh, mine's mostly risk. I've got Napoleon number five, Oppenheimer number four, Killers of the Flower Moon number three, Barbie number two, Poor Things number one. I swap out Napoleon for Asteroid City and swap out Oppenheimer for Wonka. Napoleon 5, Killers of the Flower Moon, number 4, number 3, Oppenheimer, number 2, Barbie, number 1, Poor Things. Okay. All right, and now we are taking it over to Best Sound. Hey, best Sound last yeah. year. Tom, um, what won Best Sound last year? Bam, bam, bam. False. False. What saved what? cinema last year? What's the most important movie ever made in American cinematic That's, history? Oh, Top Gun. That's right. Top Gun 2. Av Avatar The Way of Water. No, Top Gun 2. Okay. Best sound. My number five is The Creator. Number four, Maestro. Number three, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One of One. Number two, Oppenheimer. And my number one, obviously, The Zone of Interest. That is a movie where the sound mix is absolutely remarkable. It has to go to that. And oh, yeah. If I'm doing a swap, I'm swapping The Creator for The Killer. That's right, Tom. You're not the only one who remembers that movie came out. Hey, I love it. We love it. We, he, he's a guy who kills. That's why they call him The Killer. That's what words are great. Um... <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, for me, it's uh, Maestro, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, The Creator, Oppenheimer, and obviously Zone of Interest is number one. I'm taking out Maestro and Mission Impossible for John Wick 4 and Godzilla Minus One. Mm -hmm. Tom and I had a similar mindset. Mission Impossible for number five, number four, The Creator, number three, Maestro, number two, Oppenheimer, and number one, The Zone of Interest. All right, friends, we're in the final stretch. Only five categories yeah. left. Let's go. Best original song. Last oh. year's winner, Not Too Not Too from Rise Royal Revolt. Damn the, straight. One of the best wins of the night. Not That's Too true. Not best Too. Wins. Best wins, period. Not Too Not honestly. Too beating the non-existent Lady Gaga song makes me so happy. Um, last year's nominees also included a Diane Warren song from a movie that nobody saw, and I'm so glad that this year's nominees do too. That's right. Number five was, uh, I'm putting it number five, The Fire Inside from Flamin' Hot. Stop giving Diane Warren nominations. Number four, What Was I Made For from Barbie. Number three, It Never Went Away from American Symphony. Number two, I'm Just Ken from Barbie. And number one was Zayz, was Zay Zay. I want to make sure I try and do that right. Was Zay Zay, a song for my people from Killers of the Flower Moon. Wouldn't it be dope if that won? Uh, I would swap out The Fire Inside for Dear Alien Who Art in Heaven from Asteroid City. Uh, and I would swap out What Was I Made For for Can't Catch Me Now from The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbird and Snakes, the Olivia Rodrigo song, if anybody needs help with that. Uh, but we all know it doesn't matter what I think. The Eilish Industrial Complex will get her another Oscar for a song that we don't remember. Tom. People have been trying to convince me that Billie Eilish made a song for Barbie. And I'm here to tell you, no, she didn't. That song is not in the movie. I don't know what people are fucking talking about. Nonsense. Absolute fucking nonsense. So we got one song that doesn't even exist. It's a fucking... <laughs> it's a false flag operation. Um, psyop. It's a psyop. Uh, um, American Symphony? Sure. That's a, a, a two words put together. I, uh, um, I'm Just Ken is fun. Okay, that I do remember. Uh, and f Flamin' Hot? You're telling me we're giving... Any sort of credence to a movie about the guy who made literally the most unhealthy snack in America? <laughs> no. Why don't we just make a fucking movie about the guy who decide who figured out the best way to smuggle fentanyl into the country? I'm on a fentanyl kick. I don't know, and I'm not even a right winger, but I'm just on fentanyl today. <laughs> yeah, you are on you're on fentanyl every day, Tom. I what am. Is your writing? <laughs> what? 
What is your rating? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't fucking Kyle. know. You I know, saw the Barbie movie and ki- yeah. uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. You, there you go. Okay, great. Do you, Kyle. Do you have okay, do you have do you have to ask me what my favorite okay. song is? Okay. Next. Okay. Amanda, what's next? Because don't forget, once we stop, we gotta let Kyle upload these files. Okay. Oh so, fuck uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can leave our score. laptops. Okay. Sorry, was that Amanda again? Best original score. Best original score. Last year, unfortunately, went to All Quiet on the Western Front, which is the stupidest decision. <laughs> what I fucking hate that morons. Score so much. It's such a Assholes. bad score. Let's talk about the stupid decisions they'll make this year. Uh, my number five is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. My number four is Poor Things. Number three, American Fiction. Number two, Oppenheimer. Number one, Killers of the Flower Moon. Even people, I'm shake your head all you want, Kyle. I'm sorry, guys. You're you're maybe gonna give Lily Gladstone an Oscar. Robbie Robertson is dead. Give him an Oscar for this extraordinary score. What does he need it for? He's dead. If I'm swapping, (laughs) if I'm swapping, uh, I'm taking out Indiana Jones in favor of The Boy and the Heron, which is an exceptional score and really should have been recognized. All right, um, American Fiction, Killers of the Flower Moon, Indiana Jones. Poor Things and Oppenheimer. Um, I I don't have any swaps, man. I don't know. Uh, yeah, American Fiction. Put in Godzilla. Yeah, there you go. Really, you don't like the? I thought you would have loved the Boy in the Heron score. Uh, I honestly don't remember it. Okay, okay. I would have expected that be on there. I'm you. You know me with music. I don't. I don't really retain that shit a lot. Okay. Uh, number five uh, is uh, Dial of Destiny. Number four, American Fiction. Number three, Killers of the Flower of the Moon. Number two. Poor things and number one Oppenheimer. I will do anything in my power to get Ludwig Gordon and his damn egot because I think he's only a Tony away at this point. All right, we are going full steam ahead into best editing. Ooh yeah! Uh, last year, best editing. Everything was everywhere. That, was that everything everywhere? Did it take editing and picture? Uh, hold please. Editing. Or is this was everything article? everywhere all at once? Was everything yep. everywhere all at once? Okay, great. Yeah. All right, Tom, you're right. right. Uh, Editing, uh, Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Poor Things, and Oppenheimer. I'm swapping out Anatomy of a Fall and The Holdovers for John Wick 4 and Ferrari. For me, number five, Poor Things. Number four, The Holdovers. Number three, Oppenheimer. Number two, Anatomy of a Fall. Number one, Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, I swap out Poor Things for Ferrari, and I swap out The Holdovers for The Iron Claw, even though I have a problem with its editing. They edited out MJF. Kyle? Number five, The Holdovers. Number four, Killers of the Flower Moon. Number three, Anatomy of a Fall. Number two, Poor Things. And number one, Oppenheimer. All right. Sorry, you distracted me by mentioning MJF. (laughs) Um, And we are moving on to Best Cinematography. All right. Uh, best cinematography. Last year's winner was oh Jesus Christ. Did that also go to All Quiet? It. Blah, 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 blah. Where the hell? Where'd it go? Um. Hey yeah. No, it's All Quiet. It is All Quiet. That's what I say. It went All Quiet. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Boo. Boo. Uh, my number this five. Man. My number five is Maestro. My number four is Poor Things. Number three, El Conde. Number two, Killers of the Flower Moon. And yes, fine guys, I, I give up. I give up. Number one is Oppenheimer. Uh, there we go. I would swap out Maestro for The Zone of Interest, and I would swap out Poor Things for Asteroid City. Mm. Uh, I didn't see El Conde, so uh, here's Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Poor Things, and Oppenheimer. Uh, and I'm going to just slot uh, John Wick 4 in there because it's pr- very pretty when people go boom and they die. I like when people die. Uh, Someone kill me co- right now, please. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> We're almost done. We're, We're almost, almost done. done in this thing that definitely gets split into two parts. Uh, but will but number- we let people know it's a part one and a part two? <laughs> part one, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, but El, Con- El Conde, number five, number four, uh, Maestro, number three, Killers of the Flower Moon, number two, Poor Things, and number one, Oppenheimer. Kyle, you watched El Conde? No, that's why it was number oh, five. okay. I was like, I can't imagine you going out of your way to watch. <laughs> number five by default. <laughs> number five by default. Yeah, a couple of those were number five. Yeah, a couple. Okay. Yeah, don't anyway. Just pretend you watched them at this point. Uh, okay. It was my best favorite movie. What's, anyway. What? And, and and round us out. Closing out an episode that is now rivaling Killers of the Flower Moon for <laughs> one runtime, we have best visual effects. 
Okay. Uh, oh, Tom, you go. You're up. Well, what uh, one? Oh, last year visual effects went to Avatar The Way of Water. It sure did. God damn right. Oh, hell yeah. That's right. Fuck. Um, I feel like... Wait. Visual I only effects. have four listed, so I think I'm missing one, but you I can't see, see it. You didn't see Napoleon. It's, it's, oh, okay. Yeah, so I didn't yeah. see Napoleon. Uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, The Creator... Godzilla minus one, obviously. Mm-hmm. I don't have any swaps. All right. Uh, my number five, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. Number four, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part 1 of 1. Number three, Napoleon. Number two, Godzilla minus one. Number one, The Creator. I got to give it to him. The Creator had really impressive visual effects. I really wanted to give it to Godzilla, but I got to give it to Creator. And for me, I've got number five, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part 1. Number four, The Creator. Number three, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. Number two, Napoleon. And number one, of course, Godzilla, Minus 1. And with that, we have wrapped up our Oscar special. Somehow, somehow, we did not anticipate that having twice as many people talking as we normally do would lead to a double length of our usual runtime. This will probably get split up in some capacity. We will figure that out. But anybody who checked this out, just so you know, this is not normally what we do. Normally, the show is talking about the Library of Congress's National Film Registry. And in fact, starting next week, we are going to begin a new season of the show. We are yeah, kicking baby. things off, talking about double indemnity with Phil Iskov. So check us out either on your favorite podcasting app, on YouTube, wherever. Uh, I am so happy to have done this even for as long as it got. We are giving Amanda quite a baptism by fire for her first episode. You ain't fucking kidding, bro. We did not expect that, but Amanda, we are so glad to have you here. Everybody, please subscribe wherever you check it out. We are so happy to have you here. We'll be back next week, back to our regular You're Missing Out schedule for Double Indemnity with Phil Isco. And don't forget, the day after the Oscars, if you check out our YouTube channel, Tom and I will be live streaming our reactions to the show and what actually won, and it will not be nearly this long. Thanks, everybody. Oh, thank God. All right, fuck off.